Watch this, Lise. You can actually pinpoint the second when his heart rips in half. And now. Oh. Hello, everyone. Plague Vog Harbor here with a new episode of RBY Bites. Today, I'm going to be talking about the days where Pokemon was a televised esport. This is an incredibly obscure part of Pokemon history, as it was strictly a Japanese thing held at the heights of Pokemania from 1997 to 2001. However, a lot of old media from this era was thrown out, given TV stations would throw out their broadcasts at this period. Thus, much of the footage we have here is reserved to VHS tapes that people recorded at the time. As they say, you had to be there to believe it, and this holds true for more than anything else in the Pokemania era. Some historic battles were played during this period, and unfortunately, many of them just can't be viewed anymore. So, where was all this happening? TV Tokyo, specifically on 64 Mario Stadium, a show run by Nintendo from the early 90s to 2000. It went through several renames as Nintendo released content, but this specific era of the show saw the televised competitive Gen 1 and 2 battles. Some of these would be from major tournaments, others would be exhibition matches. The exhibition matches have their own Pokemon League in a segment called Battle Corner. Every week, players will battle in a King of the Hill style format, and whoever stayed there for three consecutive weeks will get inducted into the Hall of Fame and given a copy of the then elusive Pokemon Blue with a Mew in it. These matches saw a lot of interesting metagame progression. For example, early on, the Eeveelutions were popular choices for teams, and players would often use their starters, though this changed quickly. You may be wondering though, this is a pre Smogon era of Pokemon. Surely this was a lawless wasteland? Actually, no. Nintendo released their own sanctioned rule set for RBY in 1997, appropriately named Nintendo Cup 97. This format introduced many clauses that are standard today. Sleep Clause, Freeze Clause, Species Clause, Self-KO Clause, Team Preview, Bans on Mew and Mewtwo, and finally, the Bring 6 Pick 3 format. There is one caveat uh, separating this from Battle Stadium though, which you may recognise as where this came from, and that's the level range rule. Because no flat battles existed yet, for accessibility purposes, Pokemon had to be between levels 50 and 55, and those entering the battle must not exceed a combined level limit of 155. Thus, among the three you pick for the battle, you essentially have five levels to distribute among them. You can pile it all into one Pokemon to make a pseudo-mega evolution, or put a few into one for the purpose of speed creeping. Those who have played Pokemon Stadium will recognise this rule set as PokeCup. Yes, indeed, the format you played in that game was in fact the original approved rule set, just ported to different mechanics. Now, even for your seasoned RB wires, Nintendo Cup 97 plays differently to anything in Pokemon history. While you have most of your usual mechanics, this isn't just Gen 1. It's Japanese Red and Green, complete with the infamous 13.1% Freeze Blizzard and non-accurate Swift. Due to Yellow not being released yet, movable buffs like Bind Pinsir were also unavailable. An interesting caveat that comes from not using Pokemon Yellow moves is that Scyther does not get stab at all. It only gets Wing Attack at level 50 in Pokemon Yellow, and as a result of the, not having it in Red and Green, it literally can never hit a Ghost type ever. So Scyther will outright lose to even Ghastly. Quite funny, eh? As you may expect from the rules of the environment, Pokemon like Jinx, Lapras, and Tauros came to dominate the format. However, speedsters like Dogtrio and Dr. Jolteon also became popular for outspeeding level 55 Pokemon without needing level investment. However, Snorlax and Chansey, two of the members of the dreaded Big 3 in Smogon Overused, failed to make a large impact. Due to the existence of Evasion, Oko moves, Sleep, and obviously that dreaded 30.1% Freeze Blizzard, all in a Bring 6 Pick 3 format, their staying power becomes far less valuable. Two of your Pokemon are likely to get pseudo KO'd right out of the gate, so there was no time for dilly dallying. This is why Lapras and Jinx became so popular, resisting Blizzard while having access to it themselves alongside their own Sleep moves. Now, all this format specification is well and good, but it was extremely difficult to make a good team in this early era of Pokemon. Being Gen 1 and the first year of its release, information was largely limited to strategy guides aimed at just completing the game, let alone getting good at it. Keep in mind, you couldn't even view your move stats until, until like Pokemon Stadium K actually came out, and this was way before that. Hell, DVs weren't even known to exist yet, Nintendo themselves would reveal them a bit like a year later. So, th this lack of knowledge actually came up in the footage you're seeing right now, where someone expected their speed screwed Jolteon to outrun Taurus, only for the opposite to happen, which caused them to lose the match. Stat experience was vaguely known, but only through the whole Pokemon training stuff. 
Similarly, with TMs being one use and PP ops being limited, to get important moves like Blizzard and Body Slam on multiple Pokemon, you either needed two RBY setups plus a Link Cable, or a very, very helpful friend. You would also see people making concessions, like Strength as a budget version of Body Slam. Uh, that kind of helped, but obviously they were significantly behind. This added like a small pay to win element in some respects. It's kind of weird. Keep in mind, Missingno wouldn't be documented for another two years, and even then, it isn't encountered through the usual old manglish of Japanese releases. This was actually a localization error. It was actually extremely hard to prepare for tournaments back then, and those who won truly earned it. We actually know quite a few of the teams that were used back then, thanks to documentation from some competitors, as well as one very unlikely source, the Japanese versions of Pokemon Stadium. You see, competitors in the final national tournaments at Space World 97 got their teams directly imported into the stadium games, down to DVs and static speed for players to fight. These teams were quite interesting, only a few players had max PP, uh, some players couldn't even get enough vitamins to up their static speed, and many sets were clearly making concessions. It seemed a few players consistently had Pokemon with higher DVs on average though, so maybe a few players were catching on to how strat distribution truly worked. Maybe they were a bit ahead. These teams are a very eye-opening look into how the 97 meta game looked and played, and I strongly recommend you look at it yourself through my sources in the description. The player who won the Space World event, Toru Miyazawa, was a very interesting player. He used Kangaskhan, a Pokemon nobody really looked at prior, as an interchangeable Taurus. This was key for fighting Articuno specifically, as Kangaskhan had access to Rock Slide and could outrun it, giving Miyazawa a significant advantage against team composition at the time. Articuno was the Pokemon to beat during this period, being the best user of Blizzard in the game, and with a level advantage, Kangaskhan could actually 2 KO it with Rock Slide. This was one of the first instances of interchangeable Pokemon being used in a Bring 6 Pick 3 format, something that is actually somewhat commonplace in modern Battle Stadium play. His team is significantly more well trained compared to the rest of his competition as well, featuring most Pokemon at above 30,000 static speed and having max PP ups on use on almost everything. He also innovated level 55 Starmie, an uncommon but powerful use for the Pokemon, beating Taurus one on one thanks to outspeeding and hitting it with Thunder Wave. Though Miyazawa didn't use Thunder Wave on his set. It seems that this Starmie usage was a quickly made decision, with Starmie lacking PP ups, not having static speed over 30,000, and having zero special DVs. The special DV part specifically putting its offense in line with even the level 50 ones, so it didn't really have that big of an impact using this level advantage. If the early days of the competitive Pokemon era were an arms race, Tori Miyazawa had indisputably won. He had not just won the tournament, but dominated the competition on a knowledge level. So that was the first year of competitive Pokemon as a televised esport. This would continue throughout 1998 and 1999, where different rule sets were used to balance the game though these would not see, see the same prominence as the originals. In 1998, the format was cut down so much that you could only use level 30 Pokemon and only those that were available in the first Japanese stadium game, making it the first Dexit format if you will. RBY is often call this release Stadium Zero, just to make it easier to understand because you know Stadium 1, well we think of that as the international second game. We never got this one in the west and it was intended to be expanded with an N64 disk drive, which would never come to fruition because the N64 disk drive had the most comical commercial failure in Nintendo's history, next to the Virtual Boy. And as a result, all of the content from there would get put into a second stadium title instead, which we would get. This is all we know as Stadium 1. The Nintendo Cup 1998 format was dominated by Executor, which profited heavily from the various move restrictions incurred by a level 30 cap. For example, Jojo could get Pin Missile, which meant it was actually stonewalled by Executor, and this was a very important Pokemon to wall. So, as a result of these restrictions, Tauros, Jolteon, and Snorlax would see heavy usage. The latter greatly appreciated the nerf to Blizzard, which had its modern freeze chance in Stadium Zero. In 1999, the 97 rule set style was reused, only this time allowing only level 50 Pokemon. However, it would ban all Pokemon that topped the Space World event, forming what was effectively the very first underused tier in concept. This format would be played in the second stadium title, which had the perfect conditions for Slowbro to become a force of nature, dominating the format for its entire run. Persian and Electabuzz also became popular speedsters, the former forcing a lot of Pokemon to run the nerfed counter just to contest its mighty slash. Interestingly, many of the Meta Games top Pokemon resemble Smogon's current underused tier. Perhaps the old players were onto something. Unfortunately, despite these Meta Games being present with Japanese stadium titles, they were caught in localization for unknown reasons. 
Possibly, it was due to a culture difference. Given the massive nerfs to many teams in Rental Pokemon, it could be inferred that the developers thought we weren't ready for the difficulty. This was a common sight in localization of the video games back then, after all. So that's an abbreviated history of Pokemon as a televised esport. The 97 meta game is actually available on Showdown right now, in its Japanese form and all. Join the RBY Discord today and experience these history-rich formats for yourself.